Here I want to give you a short overview the ideas behind my project, my new project, the ESP Micro MQTT Broker for the ESP8266. When you buy a home automation uh, application from a certain vendor, you often get a solution like this. You get some sensors and actors and you get access to the vendor's cloud and there's communication between the devices and the vendor's cloud through some web requests, but that's more or less uh, uh, opaque. And from there you have access to the, um, to the vendor's cloud via a tablet smartphone for control uh, and observation. But this is not what we really want, because with such a solution you are totally dependent on the vendor, on the proprietary protocols and applications, and uh, also on all the uh, features of security, privacy, availability and functionality because everything is routed through the vendors, proprietary clouds, APIs and uh, the application is dependent on that. So what we actually want is a more open solution. Such a solution might look like this where you have sensors and actors again and they are communicating via open protocols, for example, the MQTT Publisher Subscriber Protocol to some services in the internet that might be hosted on uh, several cloud um, solutions from, from different vendors. They all uh, support MQTT uh, in uh, the, the one or the other form and application could be hosted there and from there con uh, command and control uh, should be possible via smartphone. But uh, if you want to have a more self-contained solution, then you typically end up with SysZetup, which is quite common in many projects uh, you find around, even here on YouTube. And uh, in this um, setup, you have a local MQTT broker and you have uh, uh, additionally a home automation controller that does the local control it uh, configures what happens on certain publications, it connects sensors to actors, and it might also have the connection to the cloud where some global services, for example, uh, data logging and presentation services are located. And from there, again, the smartphone might access the sensors of the smart home. This, this solution is not necessarily dependent on the cloud uh, control, but uh, many home automation controllers provide their own local web interface. And so you can have even remote access to your data uh, via the internet if you just connect to your local home automation controller. And to look at a more concrete solution, this might, for example, be uh, sensors and actors based on the ESP8266 that's uh, where we come from. And um, these connect via MQTT to uh, MQTT broker. That's uh, absolutely necessary when you use MQTT. And this is typically in most of the projects, the Mosquito uh, broker, an uh, open source solution. And for the home automation server, the, the brave one of you might choose to use OpenHab2 which is a, um, a quite uh, powerful solution, but it's not so easy to configure, uh, but it can be configured to work with MQTT and many, many other protocols. And uh, it also offers a web interface. If you are uh, interested in a faster and quicker solution, then you probably uh, would switch to Node-RED, which is also a control application, but its configuration, it's uh, more or less um, a graphical uh, uh, clicking application where you can set up data flows much easier. But anyway, uh, whatever you, uh, solution you choose, you need to have some um, implementation uh, container for the broker and the home automation server. And in most solutions, you would end up with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it is powerful enough to host both of them and it is typically small enough to uh, be uh, somewhere hidden in your home and running all of the time. 
you might want to get rid of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then you might consider moving some of the functionalities from the Pi to other smaller, cheaper nodes. And this is where the micro MQTT broker comes in. With this software, you can move the MQTT broker uh, onto an, another ESP8266. But this again requires the control application on the Raspberry Pi. So actually you haven't saved a lot. You just have one more hardware component. So what's the ratio behind this then? The next solution might be that you can uh, uh, co-host the MQTT broker on some of the sensors or actors. In my environment, this is, for example, on the uh, Sonoff switches. They are powered all the time and they have enough resources to host the uh, MQTT broker in addition to their simple switching um, functionality. Then you have, again, a Raspberry Pi and some ESPs. So not much of a saving up to now. So Now the next idea would be to completely embed on the Raspberry Pi and use the M uh, ESP8266 also as controller, at least for some local control, and to uh, use again some public uh, IoT um, services like the several uh, cloud servers with MQTT access mm -hmm. to provide, for example, for the, uh, for the data store and the graphical user interface. And then you have actually saved a lot because you don't have a Raspberry Pi or any other Unix-like uh, host um, that is required to run your applications. So to summarize, the idea is that you can um, use um, ESP8266 as local um, MQTT broker and as control application all on one small controller with a very low power consumption. An ESP8266 has an average consumption of a quarter of a watt compared to um, at least uh, 1.2 watts for a Raspberry Pi 2 or dot, uh, 6 watts for a uh, Pi Zero um, with uh, Wi-Fi. This is still more than twice as much. So you can even consider running an application battery powered with an ESP. And it's much cheaper. An ESP costs you about $2 uh, versus uh, as a $12 that you currently have to pay even for a Pi Zero. And um, it's much even much more for the bigger Pi 2 uh, or something like that. And you need less software. You need no Linux system here anymore. You uh, need no expertise on uh, Linux and you have less software that might have um, problems with configuring or with security. And you can consider building standalone applications based on the MQTT standard. Uh, not for all applications, you actually need an interface or you need the um, access to the internet or the time. So you might have um, applications that run more or less standalone, perhaps sometimes connect to the internet, or they are even mobile in your car or in your, um, in your, your camping van or whatever. And uh, there you can still have some home automation services with a standalone uh, MQTT broker. And uh, as I said, for example, a Sonoff switch is a perfect uh, host for the MQTT um, uh, broker as it is, has a permanent power supply and it's actually quite cheap. Now let's have a look into the software architecture of um, the micro MQTT broker. It consists of uh, three layers of software uh, that can all used uh, incrementally, meaning you don't need to use the upper layer if it doesn't fit into your application. It is freely available and it's all packed into one repository on GitHub. The uh, layers are the MQTT broker itself, the 
control uh, application on top and finally the scripting language for the uh, connections of um, uh, sensors and actors of the various MQTT publishes and subscribes. And it's all based on the ESP8266 SDK, which means it's written in C and uh, the code and the binar binary firmware version is provided. Let's have a look into the, uh, uh, the layers. The ESP MQTT layer is actually a fork from Tuan PMT's ESP MQTT client library and it still has the full client functionality and it adds the MQTT broker functionality with some restrictions. It's not a full-fledged broker. There are restrictions due to memory of a smaller number of clients. So if you don't use the upper layers, it has been tested with eight clients at the same time, but even with the upper layers, uh, three to four uh, clients are possible. It supports retained messages, the last will testament, and QoS level zero only, which means there is no um, uh, confirmation of messages beyond the TCP confirmation. And it uses, um, it provides username, uh, password authentication. It currently does not provide uh, a certificate or um, TLS uh, secured uh, connections. In a local environment, it's not absolutely necessary as long as you are uh, connecting via a protected uh, Wi-Fi link. So this library can be used in your own project. It provides the broker just a few calls and you have in the background running a broker and you can uh, program your own um, uh, control application on top of that. If you want to use more, you can use the uh, control framework um, that offers a, um, a command line interface to configure the station and or the um, AP interfaces of the ESP so that you can have the broker either as a central AP or connected to a uh, um, another AP as a station, or even both. You can configure uh, the MQTT, you can configure the broker part, of course that's the uh, most important, but you also can use it as a client. You can even disable the broker and just use it as a client. This makes sense in combination with the scripting language, where you can have control application on top of another MQTT broker, if you like that. This all is accessible via a command line interface. You can access this either via TC port, TCP port 7777 or via the serial connection um, with 1,500 uh, baud. And uh, here you can also get status reports and you can do some uh, access control and locking to prevent unauthorized access uh, to your control interfaces. And from there on, you can load and execute uh, scripts in the own scripting language of the micro MQTT broker. This scripting language has turned to something like a Swiss Army knife for MQTT. You can basically uh, do everything you would like with MQTT as long as not uh, very uh, sophisticated data types are involved. And uh, the language is written on an event-based model. So uh, it consists of clauses saying on event, do something. Events might be the, um, uh, uh, might be a, the, an, an receive of a topic. It might be a timer event. It might even be a local GPIO interrupt from the, uh, uh, the binary input outputs. Um, from the control application, you can do an over-the-air download of scripts. And so this means once you have flashed the ESP micro MQTT broker, you don't need to do any flashing actions anymore. You can configure and even um, uh, um, provide these, these scripts uh, via the, uh, the over-the-air interfaces. 
the features of the uh, scripting language you can do of course mqtt publish and subscribe so you can publish to remote brokers and you can publish to uh, uh, subscribe to your your own broker you have variables you have some variables that are stored permanently in flash so that you can even preserve state over reboots it has timers uh, when connected to the inter uh, internet it has access to ntp so it provides the global ntp time you have access uh, input and output access to the local gpos and you have print and logging commands to the console so that you can write full-fledged programs uh, doing some control in mqtt in the scripts directory of the uh, repository you find some examples there will be another video on uh, more details on how doing the scripting and uh, how configuring all that but this is the next video so to summarize the ESP MQTT broker uh, is um, a software that is typically useful in a, pro a small IoT project where you have only a few devices and a few data and where the overall costs are important it is extendable and you can integrate it with other IoT solutions even in the cloud as it uses MQTT as open standard so it can interface with any of these solutions as uh, presented it is really a low power solution and the uh, components are really cheap so you can build very very small um, uh, IoT applications uh, with this setup and there is even no real coding required it all can do in a script language which uh, somewhat uh, looks like a basic or something like that so it's very very easy you can find code binaries and more infos in the readme at the uh, provided uh, address at github and i would be happy to receive any commands uh, com uh, commands any uh, feedback uh, even um, feature requests uh, via these channels Thank you.